I want you to hit me as hard as you can. Go, go! Before you kids had your Marvel Cinematic Universes and DC Cinematic Universes, audiences of the 30s and 40s thrilled to the spooky adventures of the Universal Monsters. And this weekend, Universal's gonna start getting in on the Cinematic Universe craze by bringing back those monsters in the dark universe, beginning with Tom Cruise and Russell Crowe battling the bandage-wrapped evil of the mummy. And with Universal hoping to cross as a fist horror of the Boris Karloff original with the rip-roaring adventure of the Brendan Fraser remakes, this movie may successfully bring the Universal monsters back to life in a way that Dracula Untold and Van Helsing sure as hell didn't. Speaking of the Universal Monsters, let us bring to life the tale of Frankenstein. That's Frankenstein. The most iconic image people have of Mary Shelley's modern Prometheus is that of Boris Karloff in Universal's classic cinematic adaptations. But other actors have had a shot at playing the lumbering beast as well. Christopher Lee, Peter Boyle, Robert De Niro, and coming soon in Universal's dark universe, Javier Bardem. And three years ago, we had Aaron Eckhart donning the stitches as I, Frankenstein. This flick was based off the graphic novel by Kevin Grevieu, who you may remember as one of the co-writers and co-stars of Underworld. Uh, you know, he was that big muscly guy who kind of looked and sounded like the love child of James Earl Jones and Michael Clark Duncan. AG rounds, high content, preventing him from making the change. And here he reteamed with the same studio behind Underworld to bring his comic to the big screen, with initial plans to cross this movie over with the Underworld series, which immediately got scrapped. But that may have ended up hurting this movie, as it landed in theaters to bad box office and even worse reviews. So let us discover whether this version of the Frankenstein tale belongs dead or deserves to be brought back to life. Let's start up the movie. I heard him yelling in the castle. Fix me. His name's Big Brain. Fix me. I said. Oh, ha ha, guys. Very funny. That monster only looks marginally like Aaron Eckhart. So the actual movie begins with Frankenstein's monster, played by Aaron Eckhart, summing up the events of the Frankenstein story. Guy makes monster, guy throws monster off bridge, monster comes back, monster kills guy's wife, guy vows revenge on monster, and guy ends up freezing to death in a North Pole. But afterwards, we find out that the creature took his creator's frozen corpse, and instead of thawing him out with a bowl of chicken noodle soup like you're supposed to do, buried him in his family's cemetery. It's then that he's attacked by a gang of demons who want to bring the creature into their boss. But then the gargoyles decorating the cemetery come to life and slay the demons. And this is clearly the deleted part of the Frankenstein book, where Mary Shelley's opium started to kick in while she was writing. The creature awakens in a castle, greeted by Gideon, the leader of the Gargoyle army, played by Jai Courtney, and Leonor, the queen of the Gargoyles, played by Miranda Otto, who tell the creature that a war has been raging over domination of the Earth for centuries between demons sent from hell and gargoyles sent from heaven. Kind of like Underworld, except it's devils versus gargoyles, and it's stupid. So the Gargoyle army invites the creature to fight alongside them, and are even nice enough to give him a name. I understand Frankenstein never offered you a name. I should like to call you. Adam. I also understand Frankenstein stitched an ass where your chin should be. Oh, you poor, poor creature. But even though Adam refuses their offer and goes into exile, the demons eventually catch up on his trail, and he decides to come out of hiding 200 years later in modern day, so that he can hunt down the demons who are hunting him. Once the demons find out the creature's still alive, they report it back to their boss, the demon prince Nibirius, played by Bill Nye, who now poses as a billionaire businessman who runs a scientific institute dedicated to bringing dead corpses back to life. So that demons can possess the bodies, thus being unable to be killed by the gargoyles and able to take over the world. It sounds stupid, sure, but at least with this character, you can now accurately say he is Bill Nye, the, the science, science guy. guy. No, God! Anyway, Nimbirius needs the creature, as well as the diaries of Victor Frankenstein, in order to harness the secrets of reanimating the dead. So he sixes his demon army on the gargoyles' castle in order to retrieve them. And here's where the movie starts descending into a visual assault of CGI. And I'm talking bad CGI. The gargoyles look like they belong in the PS3 game based on this movie instead of the actual movie. And I would say that the demons look like Doctor Who villains, but that'd be an insult to the makeup department on Doctor Who. Plus, with all this interesting mythology and backstory going on, you need a movie that's longer than 92 minutes and costs more than $65 million. But we get a movie that's way too short, way too cheap, and takes itself way too seriously. I mean, come on, guys. This is a movie about gargoyles fighting 
fighting demons over Frankenstein's monster. But you're acting like you're in a production of Julius Caesar. Do we bring him back here again? Sacrifice even more of us to protect him? Or do we finally put an end to all of this and deny Nibirius his prize as we should have done long ago? I am all kind of nobody you can come at me for me. I swear, by the I forswear. I mean, Aaron Eckhart took this movie so seriously that he put on some six-pack abs, only to look like the guy from Beastly grew some hair. He's even using the same voice he used to play Two-Face. I go my own way. I think your boss is a demon prince called Nibirius. <laughs> Tell me where Zeriel took her. <laughs> where is she? How's that feel? I wouldn't! <laughs> And yet, in spite of the movie's best efforts to rain on my parade, I still found a lot to unintentionally laugh at. Which is the big conundrum behind this movie. You want the people behind it to take it less seriously, yet it's funnier when they're treating this stupid shit with a straight face. I mean, if any actor is in on the joke in this thing, it would have to be Bill Nye. Probably because the Underworld movies have already prepared him in playing the leader of a demonic group whose non-human form forces him to wear some stupid prosthetic makeup. I am a demon prince! You will kneel before me! Ah, uh, yes, Demon Prince, a late great musical artist known for such great albums as Purple Rain of Terror, Sign of the End Times, and Love Satan. So, for anyone wondering what it would look like if the Underworld creators did a live action movie of Disney's Gargoyles, then I, Frankenstein, might be up your alley. But as an enjoyably bad movie, it overcomes its overload of cheap CGI and choppily edited fight scenes to end up delivering delivering some stupid fun that doesn't overstay its welcome. As for that new Frankenstein movie from Universal, well, I love Javier Bardem and all, but come on guys. If you cast Quentin Tarantino as the monster, you would save so much money on makeup effects. <laughs> Let us toast to a new world of gods and monsters, as we bring our inner monsters back to life when we're through with a round of the awfully good drinking game. Take a shot or drink every time the gargoyles take human form or change back into gargoyles. I will do what I must. Then you are no better than Nibirius. Oh shit, Adam, you see what you just did? You almost made Eowyn turn into Gollum. Really, what's up with all these Lord of the Rings characters having the power to make scary faces? You hear the sound of a blade being drawn. <laughs> I mean, imagine how many more knives the Ginsu people would have sold if they used those sound effects in their commercials. It can split a log, yet handle your most delicate shopping. It's even designed to be a meat tenderizer. How's that for a clever cleaver? You see Adam breaking through another surface. You know, with all this breaking through walls, this guy is less I Frankenstein and more I Kool-Aid Man. Hey, Oh yeah! You see Bruce Spence from the Mad Max movies pop up. Excellent. Thank you, Dr. Wright. I mean, he doesn't really do anything. I just thought you'd be glad to know he was there. And take a double shot when they make the classic mistake of calling him Frankenstein instead of Frankenstein's monster. Frankenstein! Frankenstein. As well as when they use the classic Frankenstein phrase. It's alive. It's alive. It's alive. It's alive. Oh, so they'll use the it's alive line from the old Frankenstein, but they don't utilize his famous fear of fire and torches. I mean, look at all the candles they use to light this church. And never once does the monster growl at them or flee in terror. Fire back. I'm starting to think that this movie about Frankenstein's monster fighting demons and gargoyles is severely disrespectful of its source material. And on the nudity watch, the ladies are gonna enjoy a big heaping helping of a shirtless Aaron Eckhart. Because if Twilight can give us sexy vampires, why the hell not have a sexy Frankenstein? Hell, we just got ourselves a sexy mummy. What, the old universal monsters aren't sexy to you kids? I'll have you know Boris Karloff was a sexual icon back in his day. Girls went nuts over him. That dude had so many girls coming up to him, he had to throw those bitches off of him. Get away from me, bitch! On the enjoyableness continuum scale from Boulder Bruce, I Frankenstein proves that combining Frankenstein with the Underworld series is less scary than combining it with Alvin and the Chipmunks, and brings back to life a 6 out of 10. If you're blue and you don't know where to go to, why don't you watch this movie that shit? I'm Jesse Schaefer, JoeBlow.com, and wouldn't you believe it, we've been given an exclusive sneak peek of that Javier Bardem Frankenstein movie from Universal Studios themselves. Let's go ahead and have a look. 
Okay, that's it. Call Wally up in the club's department and tell him he's fired. I don't fucking care if it was just a joke! This is awfully good movies, motherfucker! This isn't a game to me! Thank you.